Hello, and welcome to our video on how to submit Part B claims in our secure self-service portal, NGS Connects. Before we begin this tutorial, we have some reminders for Part B providers. In order to submit claims electronically via NGS Connects, you must have a completed EDI enrollment form on file. This form can be found on the ngsmedicare.com website. Select Resources on the home page and then from the drop-down arrow, select EDI Enrollment. At this time, you are unable to upload supporting documentation via NGS Connects for claim submission. If your claim is stopped and additional documentation is needed, you will receive a letter requesting the documentation, and the letter will include instructions on how to respond. To begin, click on the Part B Claim Submissions button. In the Select a Provider panel, click Select next to the applicable provider account. The Claim Submission History panel will display the last 30 days of NGS Connect's claim submissions for the provider selected. You can search for other NGS Connect's claim submissions or narrow or expand your search by using the filter options. Claims submitted via NGS Connect's prior to 2 2022 will not display in the Claim Submission History section. First, let's start with how to initiate a new claim. Click the Initiate Claim button to enter a new claim for a patient you have not submitted a Part B claim for through NGS Connects. If you submitted a claim for the beneficiary via NGS Connects prior to 2-25-2022, you will need to initiate a new claim for them. Before you begin, you will be asked if Medicare is the primary payer for the claim. If Medicare is primary, click the Yes button to proceed. Otherwise, click the No button. If the patient has a primary payer to Medicare, you cannot submit the claim to NGS via NGS Connects. In Step 1, Billing Provider Details, you will notice that most of this information auto-populates based upon the provider selected before you initiated the claim submission entry. Any information in gray shaded boxes cannot be updated. The only required fields in this step are the signature on file and federal tax identifier fields. Click the checkbox to indicate yes, the provider signature is on file. Click the applicable button to select either EIN or SSN. If the rendering provider NPI and PTAN are the same as the billing provider and you want those to auto-populate in the claim line entry information, you should select the Use Billing NPI slash PTAN as Rendering NPI slash PTAN checkbox. If you have more than one practice location with the same PTAN and NPI, you may enter the appropriate practice location where the services were rendered in the street address, city, state, and zip code fields. When you are finished with step one, click the next step button to move forward. In step two, beneficiary details, you will enter the Medicare beneficiary information. The required fields are highlighted by a red asterisk. You must complete the Medicare beneficiary number, first name, and last name exactly as they appear on the Medicare card. You should not include any punctuation, for example, hyphens. You are also required to enter the Medicare beneficiary's date of birth in the appropriate two-digit month, two-digit day, four-digit year format, and sex by clicking the drop-down arrow. Finally, you will need to enter the Medicare beneficiary's street address, city, state, and zip code. In the Signature on File field, click the checkbox if you have the beneficiary signature on file, authorizing you to submit claims on their behalf. Then click the Next button to move forward. Step 3 is used to enter claim header information. There are three required fields in this section. You must indicate whether you are accepting assignment on the claim by selecting yes or no. You must also indicate whether or not you have supporting documentation on file for the services you are billing by selecting yes or no. Finally, you must enter at least one ICD-10 diagnosis code in the Diagnosis Code A field. Do not include punctuation. 
If there are additional ICD-10 diagnosis codes that you need to include, you should enter them in the diagnosis code B through L fields. You can enter up to 12 diagnosis codes. There are three optional fields in step three. You can enter the beneficiary paid amount if the beneficiary paid for any portion of the services rendered. Do not include the dollar sign. You can enter the hospice admit and discharge date if that information is applicable to the claim you are submitting. Finally, in the additional claim information field, enter information that is typically entered into item 19 of the CMS 1500 claim form or the electronic claim equivalent. When you have completed step three, click the next step button to move forward. Step four is the claim line entry section where you will enter the claim line details. Select add a claim line to enter claim line detail information. The claim line applet will open for you to complete the required fields. You must enter the from service date and to service date in the appropriate two digit month, two digit day, and four digit year format. The required fields also include the two digit place of service, procedure code, charges, days or units, and a diagnosis pointer. The rendering provider NPI and rendering provider PTAN are required fields but may auto-populate if you indicated in step one that they are the same as the billing provider NPI PTAN. If you indicated they are the same as the billing but realized you need to update them, you can key over the information with the correct rendering provider NPI and PTAN. Once all the required fields are completed, click the Save button. You will need to complete the process for each claim line you would like to add. When you have entered all of the claim detail information, you should review for accuracy. You can edit the claim line information by clicking the ellipsis and then selecting the Edit button. When you have entered all of the claim line's information, click the Next button to move forward. Step 5 is where you may enter service-specific information. There are no required fields in this section, and in most cases you will not need to enter any information. If nothing in this step is applicable to the claim you are entering, click the Next button to move forward. Once you have entered the required claim information in steps 1 through 5, and you are ready to transmit the claim to NGS for processing, click Submit Claim button. If there are claim entry errors, you will be prompted to correct the errors in each step. We will also check for any claim entry errors once you click the Submit Claim button. If errors are identified, we will prompt you to correct them before allowing you to submit your claim. Once the claim is submitted, a message will display indicating the claim was successfully transmitted. The claim submission status will change from In Progress Not Submitted to submitted validating. The claim is then forwarded to the Electronic Data Interchange, or EDI, for front-end processing acceptance. When the claim has passed all front-end claim edits and has been accepted by the Medicare Claims Processing System, the status will update it to accepted processing. If front-end claim errors are identified and the claim is rejected, the claim status will change to failed. The system will display information associated with the front-end errors identified in the Actions section. You can click the View Comments link and the information will display in a separate window. You can view additional information by using the EDI Error Message Lookup tool available on the ngsmedicare.com website. If you would like to modify a claim that has been returned due to errors being identified, in the Claim Submission History panel, select the checkbox next to the claim to be modified and select the Edit button to make any necessary changes in Steps 1 through 5. You will then need to click the Submit Claim button to resubmit the claim for processing. Finally, if you would like to print or save an electronic copy of your claim submission entry, you can do so by clicking the Print View button. The information you entered will display in a separate window. You can print the information from your browser by right-clicking the mouse and then selecting Print or Save. Stay tuned to the National Government Services YouTube channel for more opportunities to learn about NGS Connects.